So why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, my name is Tom Smith, and for those of you who've been here before, I appreciate uh, you coming back and listening to our free educational webinar series. Um, for those that are new to this, it's it may be a little bit of a unique experience for you. Uh, Trade Monster and Option Monster have uh, gathered professional advisors, financial authors, such as Chuck Hughes, to come in and present free web, uh, educational webinars. Um, there's going to be a lot of questions. We try to keep them within 40 to 45 minutes. So ask your questions in the question and answer section of the chat area. And if we don't get to it, we'll be putting up Chuck's support number uh, for his support staff as well as for Trade Monsters. Uh, otherwise, why don't we go ahead and get started. Chuck, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me, Tom? I can. Chuck, thank you very much for coming out again and spending your time and putting together a presentation for our listeners, and we really appreciate it. Okay, great. Yeah, it's great to be here, and thank you, Tom, for uh, setting us up. All right, Chuck, I'm going to go ahead and give you the reins, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I see the beautiful picture. Okay, here we go. Can you see the uh, <laughs> I slide? Can. I okay. can. Okay. I'm going to switch to a uh, slideshow uh, presentation. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, it's great to be here, everybody. Um, we have a, a really exciting presentation for you today about high-accuracy option trading. And I've been using this strategy for many years, and it allows us to select uh, option trades that have a high probability of success. And I'll lead you through the steps that I take and I'm taking an option trade so that you can understand how to set these trades up to have a high probability of success. So we'll look at high accuracy option trade selection. That'll be the first part of our presentation today. And then the second part will be selecting an option strike price. When you want to trade an option, um, depending on the option, you could have hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to select from. So this is a pretty important part of the step in selecting a high accuracy option trade. And I'll show you some actual trades that I have on right now, and I'll take you through the steps that led to these trades that I'm, I'm currently holding in my trading account. And then we'll have a question and answer session at the end, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. So there's two steps in the high accuracy option trading process. Step one is we use my prime trade select trade selection process to select a stock or an ETF with the best profit potential. And then we select an option strike price with low time value. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's just review the overall risk with trading options. Options are highly leveraged, and they provide more profit potential compared to, say, a stock trade. But with that leverage, you also incur uh, a lot more risk. And what I'm displaying now is a Home Depot option chain that I, I took a snapshot several months ago. And at the time, Home Depot was trading at 77.73, and the August... 77 and a half strike call was trading uh, bid 320, 330. So let's assume several months ago that we purchased this option, <clears throat> and let's let's take a look at the risk profile. This this would be the at the money option at the time, and let's just look at the risk profile for trading at the money options. And what I did is I uh, I plugged this trade information into the call option purchase calculator and the calculator will calculate the profit loss potential for this trade assuming various closing prices for Home Depot stock at option expiration and in this example we used from a 10 percent increase in Home Depot stock to a 20 percent decrease so this will calculate the profit potential and we can see that if Home Depot stock was flat at option expiration, we'd have a we'd incur a 92% loss. 
And if Home Depot stock was down 5%, we'd incur 100% loss. So this is what you're up against when you're trading options. You have the risk. Uh, in, this, in this example, if the stock is flat, you lose 92%. If it's down, you lose 100%. So uh, you obviously want to avoid that kind of risk when you're trading. So in this uh, high accuracy trade selection process I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you how we can reduce this 100% risk that you incur when you trade at the money or out of the money options. So whenever you're risking 100%, you, you want to be really careful about your trade selection so that you don't lose 100% uh, of your capital. And uh, just as a side note, this was the August option, which expired last week. Home Depot closed at 75.38, so this did result in a 100% uh, loss. This uh, example trade um, that lasted several months, and it was an at the money option purchase. So this is just an example of the risks involved in option trading. So you got to be really careful about your trade selection, so you don't incur 100% loss. So the goal of this high accuracy option trading is to avoid these large losses, which can knock you out of the game. And we want to limit our risk with these option trades and at the same time still, uh, in, in, and still achieve a good profit potential. And I'll show you my current trades using this technique. And you can see that uh, despite the recent correction we've had, uh, I, I still have a very good re re average return on my options using this high accuracy trade selection. And here's a, a, just a general uh, background of the markets over the past year or so. And this is a price chart of the volatility index, which measures volatility. And each one of these spikes that you see here is a market sell-off. Here's the, the current one we're in. And each one of these spikes is, is a market sell-off. So if you're purchasing options in this type of market, you could easily incur 100% loss if your timing's not correct. So through this high accuracy trade selection process, uh, I've been able to achieve good returns despite this type of market conditions. So the first step is we use prime trade select to select high probability trades. And this is a technical uh, trade selection process. There's three steps. Uh, step one is we want to determine the price trend of the stock and we use exponential moving averages to do that. Step two is we want to confirm the price trend and determine the extent of the buying or selling pressure and isolate the very best profit opportunities. And step three is we want to select a low risk entry point using the Keltner channels. And I'll show you some actual examples of trades that I have on right now where I, I use these three steps to establish the trade. And you can see that using these three steps, I got a very low risk entry and the trade has been very uh, profitable. So step one of prime trade select is use using a trend following system to determine the price trend. And the trend following system we're going to look at was very successful during the last two severe bear markets for selecting both bullish and bearish trade. So this trend following system works well, whether it's a bullish market or a bearish market. And the, the general goal of trend following is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of the stock. This allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. And it allows us to use a system instead of emotional decision making. So we use the 50 day exponential moving average in relation to the 100 day exponential moving average to define the trend. And if the 50-day exponential moving average is above the 100-day EMA, then that stock or ETF is on a buy signal. And if the 50-day 
EMA is below the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a sell signal. So pretty pretty simple uh, system, clearly defined rules. Just looking at the price chart, you can tell instantly whether a stock is on a buy or a sell. So it's a very useful tool for uh, traders, and I find that trend following is probably the best overall way to trade for the average investor. So let's look at a trade I have on. This is for um, Cigna, the insurance company. I currently have an option trade on with Cigna. And as of today, I have about a 296% return on this trade. So I'm going to take you through the steps I use to select this trade so that you can understand how this high accuracy trade selection works. So step one is we want to determine the price trend. And what I'm displaying now is a daily price chart of Cigna. And these vertical bars represent the daily price movement of the stock. And this blue line right here is the 50-day exponential moving average. And the red line is the 100-day exponential moving average. And we can see um, almost a year ago, Cigna, the, the blue, the 50 day exponential moving average line right here crossed above the 100 day. So at that point, Cigna was on a buy signal according to our trend following system. And so as long as this blue line remains above the red line, the stock is on a buy signal. And we can say, we can see how, uh, Cigna's made a very big move right here over the past year. And the question is, how do you enter this move after this buy signal has already occurred almost a year ago? And I'm gonna show you a technique we use uh, that allows us to enter a trade on a stock that's already made a big move and get a low risk entry point. And step two of prime trade select is we want to confirm the price trend, and we use two trend confirmation indicators to confirm the price trend. On any given day, there can be hundreds of stocks that are on a buy signal according to our trend following system. So step, the goal of step two is to narrow down that list to the stocks with the best profit potential. And one of the confirmation indicators we use is called on balance volume. And on balance volume measures the volume flow with a single easy to read line. And volume flow precedes the price movement and also helps sustain the price trend. So if we see a stock that's in a price uptrend, we want to confirm that uptrend by looking at the on balance volume line. And the on balance volume line is, is calculated when a stock is closing up, volume is added to the line. When a stock closes down, volume is subtracted from the line. So the cumulative total of these additions and subtractions form the OBV line. And here's an example of the OBV line for Cigna. And we can see the daily uh, price movement here and the 50-day, 100-day EMA. And in this lower chart, this this line right here is the on balance volume line. So what we want to see is this OBV line sloping up. And if it's sloping up, then that confirms this price uptrend that we can see in the upper price chart here. And the numerical value of the OBV line is really not that important. We just simply want to see this line sloping up to confirm the price trend. <coughs> Another confirmation indicator we use is the new 52-week high list. And stocks that are making a new 52-week high are in a very powerful uptrend, and they tend to continue that price uptrend. So a stock that's making a new 52-week high confirms the price uptrend, and that allows us to further narrow down our buy list to stocks with the best profit potential. So plain and simple, if a, if a stock is on the 52-week high list, then it's a very powerful uptrend, 
and we want to focus on those types of stocks. And here's the daily price chart again for Cigna, and you can see that over the past year, Cigna's been making a series of new 52-week highs, which confirm the uh, price trend, the, the buy signal that we got back uh, last September. Now, the third step in Prime Trade Select is timing our entry, and this is a very important part of the trade selection process. And I like to use the Keltner channels to help us find a low risk entry point. I'll show you some actual examples of trades that I have on now uh, where I use the Keltner channels to find a low risk entry, even though the stock's already made a big price move. So the Keltner channels allow us to uh, enter a trade uh, and, and provide us a low risk entry. So the Keltner channels can be used to help us time our entry and exit points. Uh, they also provide high probability buy and sell signals. They can also help us use, uh, they can also be used to help us select an option strike price. And also they allow you to select stocks that have repetitive and predictive price patterns. <clears throat> so here's a uh, price chart of Home Depot, and I have the three Keltner channels uh, overlaid the uh, daily price movement. And this red and black line right here is the daily price movement for Home Depot. The upper blue line is the upper Keltner channel. The middle Keltner channel is this dotted line, and the lower uh, Keltner channel is this lower uh, blue line right here. And the Keltner channels uh, basically act as an overbought, overbought, oversold indicator, and they can be very useful when, we'll try to, when we're trying to enter a trade uh, to help us get a low risk entry. And with the Keltner channels, we want to buy when the stock is near the middle channel or the lower channel. That, that's an indication that the stock is starting to get oversold, and we don't want to buy when the stock is trading near the upper channel because the stock is, is becoming overbought. So it basically acts as an overbought, oversold indicator. We can see when the stock is getting overbought, it usually retraces. Overbought, retrace, overbought, retrace, overbought, retrace. So. Um, we want to use this to help us time our entry, and we want to buy when the stock is trading down uh, closer to the uh, middle or lower channel and the stock is becoming oversold. The other, um, the other important use for the Keltner channels is they help us focus on stocks that have repetitive and predictive price patterns and avoid stocks that have no clear trend. And this, this is a very valuable tool because it allows us to focus on stocks like J&J. &J. Uh, here's the daily price movement of J&J &J with the Keltner channels overlaid, and you can see the price pattern is very predictive and repetitive. So I'd much rather trade a stock like J&J compared to Alcoa, and you can see in this lower chart, the daily price chart of Alcoa, and there's really no clear trend. So you want to avoid stocks like this. It's just too hard to make money and just focus on stocks like J&J. &J. Here's another example, Kellogg, uh, with very predictive uh, price pattern, and FCX, uh, Freeport, McMoran, uh, very very uh, volatile trading, no clear trend, very difficult to make money. Here's one more example for Whirlpool, uh, very repetitive price patterns versus uh, Potash. And again, you want to avoid these stocks that have no clear trend. So that's another useful tool that we utilize in selecting stocks. And we simply focus on these stocks with repetitive patterns and we avoid these stocks that have no clear trend. So let's take a look at the signature trade that I have on right now. 
And we can see uh, over the past year, Cigna has had a very significant up move. And the question is, where where do you enter this stock and get a low risk entry after it's already made a big price move? And we use the Keltner channels for that. And we can see back in early June, right here, Cigna retraced near the lower Keltner channels was getting oversold. So right here, I, I entered my call option trade when the uh, stock was oversold. And of course, that turned out to be a great entry point because the stock has rallied substantially uh, since then. So that the Keltner channels allowed me to enter this trade, even though the stocks already made a big move uh, with a low risk um, entry point. So on June 3rd, I, I purchased the uh, 50 strike call at 17 points. And in a minute here, I'm going to show you how we select strike prices with the best chance of success. And in, in this case, I'm just showing you our entry point using the prime trade select and then using the Keltner channels to select our entry point. Here's another example. This is for uh, Best Buy. And uh, Best Buy, again, made a large price move and it retraced near the lower Keltner channels right here. Um, and on June 24th, I purchased uh, the 20 strike call option. And Best Buy was trading around uh, 26 to 27 at that point. And uh, today it's trading around 35. So that allowed a low risk entry into a stock that's already made a large price move. I have about a 249% return on this trade. And on the Cigna trade, I have about a 296% uh, return as of today. And what I do is I roll over the options each month and by rolling over the options, it allows me to reduce the cost basis uh, of the new option and reduce the risk and allows me to compound my returns. And that's something we're gonna cover uh, in next month's webinar. We're gonna uh, cover rolling over these trades and compounding our returns. And I'll show you how I do that using uh, option spread orders. So again, Best Buy already made a big price move, um, but I was able to get a low risk entry right here when Best Buy was trading in the $26, $27 range. Today it's, it's trading around 35. So it, it's had a big up move since this low risk entry right here. And I took a snapshot today of my option trades uh, and the open trade profits I currently have, this was uh, in my portfolio, this was a uh, retirement account. Uh, I have Best Buy options, Cigna, J&J, &J, Starbucks, Wells Fargo, and Yahoo. And I took a snapshot and I used the prime trade select and the high accuracy strike price selection to select these trades. And right now I have uh, an average return as of today of 266% on these trades, despite the recent uh, correction that we've had. <clears throat> Let's talk now about selecting an option strike price. This is a really important step in the high accuracy option trade selection process. On any given day, if you select an option trade using our prime trade select, there, there could be hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to choose from. So the question is, how do you select a strike price from the, the, these various uh, numbers of strike prices? And it can be overwhelming. I know when you look at these option chains, especially for the liquid stocks like Apple or 
Google, um, you're going to have hundreds of strike prices to choose from. So as, as far as I'm concerned, selecting the strike price is just as important as the trade selection itself. So very important step in our high accuracy trade selection. Let's just review option basics here real quickly. Option premiums consist of time value and intrinsic value. And at option expiration, options lose all time value. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. And that time value is, is going to decay each day prior to option expiration. And then at expiration, it's going to lose all of its time value. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. So due to the time decay characteristics of options, when we buy an option, we want to minimize the time value because that's going to decay to zero. And we want to maximize the intrinsic value. And the way we do that is we, we buy an in-the-money option. And as a general rule of thumb, I like to limit the time value of an option to less than 1% of the strike price per month. And if you do that, this is going to minimize the time value and maximize the intrinsic value. So, for example, if you purchase one month option on a stock that's trading around 100, you want to limit the time value of that option to one point or less, which would be 1% over a one month period. And if we were to purchase the two month option on a stock trading at 100, We'd want to limit the time value to two points or less, which would be 1% per month. So this general rule of thumb allows us to select in-the-money options that have very low time value and very high intrinsic value. And the reason that's important is if you limit the time value to 1% of the stock price, the stock only has to increase 1% in order for you to break even on the trade. So that's why this is so important. And if, if you have a, if you buy an option with 1% time value, that trade will have a much higher probability of being profitable compared to a strike price that requires say a six to 10 or even 15% increase in the underlying stock to break even. So by limiting our time value to 1% of the value of the stock, we're going to reach break even price much quicker and start profiting much quicker than an option trade that takes a 6 to 10 or 15% in the price of the stock just to break even. And I'll show you some examples of that. This is a option chain for Apple stock. And at the time, Apple was trading at 173.25. And let's just take a look. This is for the 185 strike price, which is trading around 315. So in this example, the strike price of 185 was higher than the stock price of 173. So this was an out of the money option. So out of the money options consist of 100% time value and they have no intrinsic value. So let's take a look at the profit loss potential for this out of the money option trade. And you can see that Apple stock, in order for this trade to break even, Apple stock uh, must increase 8.6% in one month for this trade just to break even. So this would be a low probability trade because you're counting on Apple to increase 8.6% in one month just to break even on this trade. So this would have a low probability of success. And here's a call option purchase calculator, which again will calculate the profit loss potential for this trade, assuming Apple stock at the time was trading at 173, we buy the 185 strike uh, 
call option and the premium was 315. So the calculator calculates the profit potential in this example from a 10% increase in the stock to a 10% decrease in the stock. And the calculator also calculates the, t the intrinsic value and the time value of the option. So in this example, it was an out of the money option. We can see that there was no intrinsic value, it was all time value. So we can see with this type of trade, even if Apple stock goes up 5%, you're gonna incur 100% loss on this trade. If the stock is flat or goes down at all, again, you're gonna incur 100% loss. So uh, selecting the option price is, is very important because you don't wanna incur 100% loss with your trade. So this is a good example of how at the money and out of the money options require a large uh, price in the underlying stock just to break even, and that reduces your probability of success in option trading. So I would much rather trade an in the money option. And here's an example of an in the money option. Um, I took this snapshot at the same time frame when Apple was trading at 173. And the 150 strike call was trading at 2460. And this was an in the money option because the strike price of 150 was less than the stock price of 173. So let's look at this risk profile. And we can see with the call option purchase calculator that the time value on this option was minimal, it was only 1.35 points. The intrinsic value was 23.25, so mostly intrinsic value. And in this example, Apple stock only has to increase 1.35 points or 7 tenths of 1% to break even. And even though this is an in the money call, we can see that if the stock's up 10%, we're going to get a 64% return for the option purchase. And if the stock is up 15%, we're going to get 100% return. So even though it's an in-the-money call with less leverage, we can still uh, achieve uh, a high rate of return with these in-the-money options. So the in-the-money options produce less return than out-of-the-money, but you have a much higher probability of success. And we can see with the in-the-money option, if the stock is flat, we only lose 5%. 5.5% as opposed to 100% loss with the out of the money strike. And if the uh, stock is up 5%, we'd have a 29% return as opposed to the out of the money strike, which had 100% loss if the stock increased 5%. So you can see you have a much higher probability of success with this in the money call versus the out of the money call. So again, in this example, the Apple stock only has to increase seven tenths of 1%, less than 1% uh, to break even. And again, this would have a much higher probability of success than an out of the money call that required the 8.6% move to break even. So selecting the in the money calls with 1% time value can increase your odds of success. So let's take a look at the Cigna trade that I took. And again, uh, I selected a low risk entry point right here, purchased the 50 strike call. And at the time, uh, Cigna was trading, Cigna was trading at 66.71, uh, right, right in here when I purchased the option. So, I purchased the 50 strike call, so that was an in the money call. And here's the uh, profit loss calculation for this trade. And uh, again, Cigna was trading at 66.71. I purchased the 50 strike call at 17 points. And we can see that this option only had 29 cents of time value 
and sixteen dollars and seventy one cents of intrinsic value. So it was almost all intrinsic value. So Cigna stock only had to increase twenty nine cents for this trade to break even, and any move above twenty nine cents would be a profit on this trade. So and we can see if the stock is flat, you only incur a uh, 1.7% uh, loss. If the stock's down 5%, you incur a 21% loss. So this is a much better risk profile than risking 100% if the uh, stock is flat or up slightly. So again, uh, with 29 cents of time value, Cigna stock only has to increase 29 cents or four tenths of 1% for this trade to break even. So this increases the probability of success for this trade because it requires such a low um, price move in order for the stock to break even and start making money. So when we're looking at in the money calls versus at the money or out of the money, the Intrinsic value of an option increases one point for each point the stock increases above the strike price of the option. So uh, if you have a four tenths of one percent increase in the stock to break even, that's going to have a much higher probability of success than purchasing uh, an at the money or out of the money option that would require a six to ten six to ten percent increase in the stock price to break even. So uh, this selecting these in the money strikes uh, allows us to select a much higher uh, probability of success trade. And this is the way I like to trade options. And I'm going to show you some uh, real time results. And I also use this trade selection price uh, process in my advisory service. And you'll see from the real-time results and from the advisory service that this uh, trade selection process works pretty well uh, in just about any type of market condition. And here's another closer look. This is for uh, the Best Buy option that I purchased. And I purchased the 20-strike call at 664, and at the time, Best Buy was trading around 26.70, and now it's trading at 35. So this this stock, uh, this option trade has a big big profit in it. And again, I was able to get that low risk entry right here when the stock retraced uh, near the lower Keltner channel. And here's the risk profile for this trade, and we can see that uh, the option had. Uh, 18 cents of time value and six dollars and 46 cents of intrinsic value. Again, a much uh, lower risk trade that has a higher probability of success than if I had selected a at the money or out of the money call option. Chuck, can I throw a quick question at you? Yeah. Is uh, we're we're having a couple clients or attendees asking us, do you use a specific parameter for time? on these particular strikes, uh, standard, yeah. if you will, and time denomination? Yes, that's that's a good question. Uh, how do you select the expiration month for the option? And what I like to do, Tom, is I like to mix up the expiration months so that I diversify my portfolio a little bit more. So I'll, I'll pick a one-month, uh, two-month, uh, three-month option, and my portfolio is – a combination of different uh, expiration months. That way, I'm a little more diversified. In case there's a there's a big down move, then uh, I'm, I'm more out on the, uh, the longer term calls. I have more time for that trade to develop into a profitable trade than if I had all short term calls. So I like to mix it up and diversify it a little bit, and that will help you if especially during these type of markets where you, you, you have sell-offs occurring regularly, you want to have uh, some time left in some of your option trades to, for, the, for the trade to work out. So I'll mix it up and uh, use different uh, 
expiration months just for diversification. So let's look at some um, some high accuracy option trading that I've done over the last four or five years, uh, actual trade results. And what I did is I listed my brokerage account reports here, and these show over $1.8 million in profits, and there's an average return of 85%, and there's 183 wins and 17 losers. So it had about 91% accuracy. And I just want to go through these quick just to show you some um, actual trade results using this high accuracy option trades uh, selection process, which I've been using for many years. Here's a, this is a snapshot of uh, my Trade Monster account, and I had a $22,000 profit, average return of 198%. This was my Trading Contest account, and in this, this, uh, this time period, I had a 75.4% return. And I'll just roll through these pretty quickly, but these just show you uh, the type of profits I've had using this high accuracy trade selection process. And this, this uh, account, I had a $254,000 profit average return of 114%. So I'll just roll through these quickly. Um, this, these were about $1.8 million in profits, average return of 85%. And I had, a, I had about 91% accuracy. So this has been working well over the last four or five years uh, during varying uh, market conditions. And here's a snapshot of my advisory service, Open Trade Profits. This was as of yesterday. Um, and the market was up today, so these results are probably a little better. But as of yesterday, we had um, $141 thousand dollar open trade profit average return of 361 percent and again I use the high accuracy trade selection process that we just discussed to uh, select these options and we've been rolling these options over in the advisory service just like I do in my actual trading account and what that allows us to do is reduce our risk and the cost basis of the new option, and that allows us to compound our returns. And I'm going to focus on that technique in next month's webinar. I'm going to focus on the option rollover process and how that allows us to compound our returns. So that concludes the presentation for today. If you want to get updates on the performance of our various option and stock strategies, you can just log on to weeklyoptionalert.com and click trade results and we'll have the uh, current trade results which are updated periodically for the various uh, strategies. You can see we have eight different uh, strategies in this weekly option advisory service. Uh, or you can call Brad toll free and if you have any questions about the service, and he'd be glad to help you. So uh, I'd be glad to take any other questions that we have at this time. Sure. One of the questions that we seem to have a lot coming up is, uh, it, it, it was regarding an earlier question that you answered, Chuck, about diversifying in your strikes and your time frame in those particular strikes. For people that are starting out in options, um, especially with this particular type of strategy, is there something that, some kind of advice that you could give them on how to start out and what account size would you really need to require to start trading something with this type of strategy? Yeah, that, that's a good question. What account size would you need to start out with this if you're new to options? Um, I would say if you had, you had a five to $10,000 account, you could have a diversified portfolio of these in the money call options. And you could have one option in five different industries to help your diversification. So you may have a, an industrial stock in there, you may have a financial stock, 
uh, you may have a, uh, a tech stock and there, there's a, actually, there's many options traded right now for a lot of these stocks with higher strike prices, say, say for Google, which is trading over $900 and Apple, it's trading around $500. They now have many options, which are one tenth of the cost of the regular options. So that's another way that the smaller investor can participate in these option purchases. So if you were to buy an Apple option, let's say it costs 10 points, uh, that would cost you $1,000. But if you bought the mini option, same strike price, same expiration, instead of costing $1,000, it costs $100. So with these mini options now, you can have a diversified portfolio for a much smaller dollar amount. So I would focus uh, on liquid, the liquid stocks, the ones that meet our trade criteria, and I would buy stocks in maybe five or six different industries and purchase options on them uh, in the money options that have 1% or less time value per month. So I think if you approach it that way, you're going to have a lower risk uh, way to learn how to trade options rather than purchasing at the money or out of the money calls that have a very low chance of success. And um, you hear these stats all the time about uh, most options expire worthless, and that's true. <laughs> and if you're if you're trading at the money or out of the money, uh, you're going to be one of those people where the where the option expires worthless. So I would focus on the uh, in the money and deep in the money calls with less leverage and approach it that way and try to avoid those 100% losers, which can can simply just knock you out of the game and you you don't have enough money left to continue your trading. So we also use uh, money management with our option trading. And if you trade in the money options, you can use money management. And if the option goes against you 25 to 35%, we simply will exit that trade. So if you use in the money options, you can use money management. If you're trading at the money, or out of the money options, you can have a 50 or 100% loss in one day, so you can't realistically use money management. So that's another advantage of in the money options. You can use the money management. You can exit a trade if it's not working out and live to trade another day rather than take a 100% loss in one or two days. So uh, that would be my advice. Uh, I would uh, You could start off small with these mini options and trade five or six options in different different industries uh, using in-the-money calls using our trade selection process. And you can see from the real-time results and the advisory service results that it has been working uh, very well despite the uh, current market conditions. Chuck, uh, with, with your various strategies, especially this particular strategy, where would you give a starting point to go out and select a stock? Uh, I guess the best starting point, Tom, would be to go to the new 52-week high list and just take a look at the stocks on that new 52-week high list and then check the 50 and 100-day EMA and see if they have an upsloping on balance volume line. If they do, then you want to focus on those stocks and then wait for a retracement. Just keep track of them each day like I do. I, I have a list of stocks. For example, um, Apple right now is on my list of stocks to buy, and it meets all the, our criteria. It has an upsloping on balance volume line. It's um, the 50-day EMA just crossed above the 100-day EMA, so it's on a buy signal. And what I'm doing now is I'm waiting for that third step of prime trade select, which is selecting your entry. And I'm waiting for Apple to retrace a little bit towards the middle Keltner channel so I can get a lower risk entry. So I kind of have a list of stocks that I look at each day 
and uh, I look to see if they're if they're starting to, to trend up, uh, or even if they're making a new 52-week high, I'll wait till they retrace and become a little bit oversold, and then enter the trade. And you can see from those trade examples for Cigna and Best Buy that that provided a very low risk uh, entry, even though the stocks already made a big price move. For those of you that didn't understand what Chuck just uh, asked, uh, and my Chuck, by the way, I'm going to take over the reins as as we're speaking here. But okay. uh, Chuck just describes his 52 week premise of going out there and 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 getting positions and taking a look at those positions. Uh, Chuck has been kind enough to allow us to archive some of the webinars that Chuck's done in the past. And Chuck, if I recall, I think you went over your 52 day week list of trade selection. Yes. Yes, I've gone over that uh, several times because that's one of our confirming indicators. And I listed the um, the website uh, that you can ob obtain that 52-week uh, high list. Right, that, that's great. And I know that you, you provide that as well. If uh, On the screen right now, folks, you can take a look. at This is MyTradeMonster.com's website. On the right-hand side of it, uh, you can see the webinar archives. Uh, Chuck did a really great presentation, uh, a two-part presentation back in September, if you recall, Chuck, and I believe you went over the 52-week in the stock selection process, which could tie into this whole strategy you're using today, if I'm correct. Yes, I went into that in more detail in uh, previous webinars. That's why I kind of just did an overview today, a general sure. overview, uh, because in my previous webinars, uh, I really went into detail and I uh, listed the websites to use to obtain these various indicators, and we we went into it in more detail. Uh, today, I just kind of did an overview because we were uh, focusing on the uh, uh, option strike price selection. Right. That's great. So, again, for those of you that want to go back, retrace, listen to those archived webinars, Chuck has been kind enough to allow us to host those. So go to www.mytrademonster.com punch in the month, and you can hear Chuck giving a lot of information regarding several strategies, uh, the variations of his portfolio, et cetera. Chuck, thank you very much, by the way, for allowing us to keep those up. Oh, yeah. It's, it's my pleasure, Tom. I'm, uh, I'm always glad to uh, help educate people. Uh, it's my way of giving back. I've been very successful, and I derive a lot of satisfaction out of helping other people at this point. So. And, and I can vouch for that, Chuck, as you are our number one contributor to free education material. And as a, as a broker and as a friend to many of my clients, they thank you and I thank you. Um, hopefully, we're going to have you back again next week. And we're going to discuss that strategy that it looks like you're already primed up for. Yes. Well, it'll be next month, but yes. Or next uh, month. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's... that's um, an exciting way to trade options, and um, I'll go into detail on how we do the rollovers, and that's enabled us to compound our returns. And as you saw in my actual trading, I had a 266% average return. The website had over, uh, advisory website had over 300% average return. So uh, that's that's a really exciting strategy that's been working well. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there, folks, for those of you that are still on and listen, Chuck just pointed out entry signals for Apple Computer and we have a World Trade uh champion telling us that. So you may want to take that to heart and use some of Chuck's strategies to take a look at that one. Uh otherwise, Chuck, thank you very much for coming out again today, spending the time to do the presentation, give us some free tidbits on the market. Okay, great. Thank you, Tom, and everybody have a great day. I appreciate it, Chuck. For those of you that want to listen to this archive, I'll have it posted tomorrow right around, uh, probably around lunchtime, uh, central time. You can come back to my trade monster. I'll have it listed up here under August. Listen to it as many times as you want. Chuck's support staff's number will be on there. So if you didn't catch it today, feel free to contact Brad and his support staff. He, they, they can answer any kind of questions regarding Chuck's subscriptions and his strategies. Uh, everyone, thanks for attending. Have a great weekend. Chuck, thanks again, and we'll see you next month. Okay, sounds good, Tom. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.